Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five lithium polymer battery mistakes that you want to avoid in the current year. Now, the reason why I say it this way is batteries have been on the market for such a long time for lithium polymer. In fact, my very first year I purchased a LiPo battery pack was in 2006. Since then, there is a ton of information available to cover some of the very basics about this battery pack. With that being said, let's go ahead and kick this video off by starting at our number one spot. Now, all of these items that we're gonna talk about are in no particular importance or relevance order. All of them are important, all of them are relevant, and we need to make sure that we avoid all of them. So let's start off number one, which happens to do with our C rating. Now, a lot of the videos that I've done in the past talking about these battery packs does cover exactly what I'm about to say, and that is you want to make sure that you're using the highest C rating pack that you can for your specific application. Now there's a couple reasons why you want to use the highest C rated battery and one of those reasons is because it could be a lot easier on your speed control. You can prolong the life of the capacitors by avoiding ripple voltage within that electronic speed control just by using a battery pack that has a higher C rating rating. Keep in mind that if your battery pack was rated for let's say some stupid number of 1000 amps, that doesn't mean that that battery pack is going to force down the throat of the motor 1000 amps. It doesn't work that way, it's what the motor pulls. So you don't need to worry about throwing too much power at the motor. At the same time, going with a higher C rated battery pack is going to help prolong the life of your lithium polymer battery pack. In general, it's just a very safe and good thing to do for the overall reliability of your power system. Now, not in all cases can you pick the highest C rating depending on budget, size, and weight. And we'll come back to this in a later point that we make today. So let's move on to our second point, and that again talks about the C rating. We just said that you want to buy the highest C rating battery pack that you can possibly fit or get for your application. However, there are a lot of battery packs that are on the market that advertise a significantly high C rating. I've seen some battery packs now being uh, marketed as a 100C, 120C, and who knows, there's probably more out there on the market. And it's an important topic to kind of understand as well. Just because it says that it's a 100C rated battery pack does not necessarily mean that it can actually accomplish the task that it says it can do. Now, the way that I actually go and investigate this is I look for opinions on others that are talking about the specific battery pack. If it looks good, then I actually bring it home and I test it up against other battery packs that I've owned or other data that I've been able to grab off of the internet. Now a good example is that this battery pack here is a 5 amp hour pack and it is rated at 65 C. Now what I do when I first buy these battery packs is I usually put a number on it if I have multiple versions and I like to also place the internal resistance of the pack right on here when I buy it brand new and I do my very first couple charges and measure this value when the pack is not warm. It's a cold battery pack at room temperature. That's important if you're trying to make your own standard and we did that on another video. However, the big reason I'm pointing out this internal resistance values. This is what ultimately determines that C rating. If you purchase that 100 C battery pack, that is about 1.5 times more C rating than my 65 C pack has. In that case, you better hope that you have somewhere around 0.7 milliohms on average within that pack. If that pack doesn't actually have a lower internal resistance in comparison to this 65C pack, then it truly would not be able to perform at that 100C level. In conclusion to this specific point, you wanna be careful when you're purchasing that 100C battery pack. Keep in mind that if there are no reviews or anyone talking about its actual capabilities or you've not seen any internal resistance data, it's hard to actually determine if the battery pack if you've never heard of them before is actually up to the duty of that specific specification. Now the third mistake that you want to avoid is going to talk about the storage voltage or battery pack. 
Now this is an interesting point because I actually made this exact battery pack mistake. I know that the batteries have to be stored between 3.80 to 3.85 volts per cell if you're not going to use them for an extended period of time. Generally speaking, if I don't use my battery pack for just a few days, I'm probably going to pull it down to that storage voltage. However, at the time of me using this specific battery pack, I ended up doing things a little bit differently. I ended up using the battery pack that I had, maybe it was the number two battery pack, and I was done for the day. What happened is my number one battery pack was not actually used during that day and it was still in full state of charge and when I came home, unloaded the vehicle, I stored this battery in its typical location and completely forgot about it. Well, six months later, I go and pull out the battery pack to be used and I realized I made this mistake and what I did is I brought it down to the storage voltage and then I ended up charging it up from there and what I learned is that battery pack deteriorated significantly. The point here that I want to make is that the storage voltage of your battery pack is incredibly important. You want to make sure that if you're not going to be using that battery pack that you place it into storage mode on your charger so that battery will be somewhere between 3.80 and 3.85 volts per cell. That's where it's going to be stored for maximum lifespan for that specific battery pack. You also want to make sure you have a specific process or procedure to avoid making the mistake that I ended up doing when I came home and did not get this battery pack back on the charger to discharge it. You either take care of this at the field or you have a process that forces this battery pack to go through a specific sequence of events in order to make sure it ends up back on your shelf or wherever you place the battery pack at its storage voltage. That's important. Remember that one. Now for our next point, point number four, it's very similar and related to our very first point that we talked about, which was you want to try and find the maximum C rating that you possibly can get for your radio controlled application. Well, I have the perfect example here that I can talk about for this point. I want to make sure I use the highest C rating battery pack that I can possibly use in my specific application. This happens to be a radio controlled EDF jet. However, if I go with something like a 65 C pack such as this one, it is incredibly heavy and it would significantly affect the flight characteristics of that airplane. So what I had to do in order to lighten up the battery pack is go from that 65 C to about the 45 C and just check everything over to make sure that I'm still within a comfortable limit for what I expect my power system to be at. So let's talk about what that kind of looks like. Using the same example, that specific jet hits about the 90 to 105 amp range and that is at speed in the air, 100% throttle and I can essentially keep it at that speed for the entire duration of the flight. So it's very important that I size my battery correctly. Now what I'm looking for is a battery pack that can deliver at least 50% more than what I expect to pull. So because I expect to pull no more than about 100, 105 amps or so, I am looking to multiply that by 1.5. This gets me to about the 150 or so range. And now I want to make sure that I'm gonna supply that battery pack for this power system at that minimum target. So I work back and find out what kind of battery pack that I can use. And the 45C would be my next decision or choice. Now the interesting thing here is I'm using a 4,000 milliamp hour pack. So if you take the four amp hour, multiply that by the 45C, you're going to get a 180 amp potential for that battery pack to deliver that kind of current. This gives me that more than 50% mark that I'm looking for, which is going to suit my specific power system. Now the big point here is that you want to make sure that you're giving yourself a good amount of buffer room or headroom as we call it above and beyond of what you're going to be pulling. This will make up for any sort of discrepancies in what the battery pack is actually rated at if it is in fact not correct. And it also gives you some temperature buffer room as well so that you can increase the amount of reliability within your power system as a whole. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're hitting the electrical performance specifications that we need in order to make sure it's reliable, it's safe, and it's going to last a long time. Those are the three important things for our selection of our battery pack to use in our specific vehicle.
Now for our last point, which talks about temperature. Now the maximum temperature that you want to operate your lithium polymer battery pack is 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. This is like the cutoff point that a lot of LiPo manufacturers have agreed upon and place this right into their literature. Now the second thing that I want to talk about that directly is related with temperature is cold temperature operation. Lithium polymer battery packs such as the one that I'm holding here and all the rest of them do not like cold temperatures. In fact, they would much prefer to be in an environment that is closer to room temperature. If you are operating in cooler conditions, it's always a good idea to have that battery pack inside your home and then you can go and drop that battery into your radio control vehicle and then run it outside. This way it comes right from room temperature and goes into that cold environment and is not going to directly end up at that environment's temperature. However, if you do have that battery pack outside for an extended period of time when it's cold, it is going to drop down to that temperature. And ultimately what happens is the internal resistance of that battery pack starts to go up and you also don't have the same amount of capacity within that pack as you would at a different temperature. For example, that room temperature that we're talking about. Just something to keep in mind for when you're operating at cooler temperatures. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and we're able to take something from those points that we've talked about. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.